Hello and welcome everyone. I am Dumb Toes, aka Ricky, and today we are at Harlow's in Sacramento, California. Today we have a very special guest today, a, a band a lot of people are fans of, a band I'm a super fan of, and uh, they just performed at Coachella a couple of days ago, and they're going to perform at Coachella again a couple of days from now, April 19th, if I'm not mistaken. The first time I ever witnessed this band's greatness was in Las Vegas, Nevada at Sick New World Festival in 2023 speaking of 2023 they also released a phenomenal album in 2023 called moments of clarity signed to run for cover records representing houston texas and fort worth, and fort worth. <laughs> and fort worth. <laughs> narrowhead what's going on what's up man what's up what's up? what's up what's up oh man i'm so excited so so glad you guys could come and uh join me because big fan thanks man, thanks, man. yeah thanks hell for yeah us. and uh first off I just talked about Coachella, and I was wondering how was that experience. And when you first heard that you're going to play at Coachella, what was the initial reaction to that? Or were you guys excited and stuff? Uh, I mean, it was great. It was crazy. Um, even with playing a big festival like that, we're still like a relatively smaller band on that fest, obviously. So I feel like we didn't, you know, get like maybe the experience. My dad thought that, like, my dad thought it was awesome, and I was like, well, it's going to be cool, yeah. But it was definitely uh about what i what i was expecting i guess that kind of leads into what i was going to say is getting asked to play coachella is like obviously it's kind of hilarious Mm because it's just i don't know it's like the biggest music festival (laughs) in the western hemisphere probably but it's also like something i could easily tell my mom or dad about and they're not going to be like what the fuck is that they're like oh whoa you're playing coachella (laughs) wow yeah that's dope and um i want to i want to first give you guys some props and flowers i guess you could say because I feel like you guys are very influential with a bunch of up and coming bands right now. And I just feel like it's the overall sound that you guys have created over the past couple of years. But this era, this new era with the moments of clarity and everything, it just feels like a bunch of people are not copying your sound, but it feels like a bunch of people are looking at your sound and be like, Hey, I want to sound like that too. And uh, it just seems like Texas is on top right now with a bunch of different genres. You could name a bunch of bands right now, but that would take forever. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to say uh, you guys are awesome Thank for you. just Thank being you. very influential during this new like 2020s era, even though you guys have been around for a minute. Sure. And uh, speaking of influences, a lot of people compare you like the first band they compare you to is Deftones. And I've been one to say that. But the first band that came to mind when I listened to Narrowhead was Helmet. And I brought you guys a gift, actually. Ooh. We get, we get a little Nardwar treatment. Is it, is it a pack of cigarettes? It's a little helmet oh, magazine. dude. From the 90s. John looking cool as fuck. <laughs> yeah, a little helmet magazine. And, uh, sick, man. Is it, is it a right assessment to say that you guys sound like helmet in a way? Not sound like helmet, but there's an influence there? Definitely, yeah. I mean, we all love helmet. And Deftones, too. So neither... I mean, we're not mad if someone says we sound like Deftones or anything, obviously, but... I mean, we all love Helmet, too, so. This is a whole broader thing that, I've, like, you could say the same thing about, like, younger Texas fans getting compared to us that maybe they don't think or, I, or we don't think that they necessarily sound like us. But um, just with musical comparisons, it's like, obviously, I think there's a lot more to our music than Helmet or Deftones or Pumpkins or whatever you want to say. But it's, I mean, we'd be lying to, like, h- hide from that. You know, it's yeah, like yeah. Helmet and Deftones and Pumpkins and. MBV and Swerve Driver and Deftone, you know, any number of bands are like yeah. hugely influential. Yeah. So the whole point in their head is to be an amalgamation of all of that, anyway. So yeah. yeah, that's exactly what I think. Whenever I listen to you guys, there's a bunch of different sounds, but at the end of the day, it's just Narrowhead. And a lot of people like to throw a bunch of different labels nowadays. And at the end of the day, it's just rock. And uh, that's why I like to say and. Uh, they're an influence and stuff, but I'm always curious whenever I talk to bands, is there an influence on you guys that nobody ever talks about or ever mentions that really has a big influence on the band as a whole? Sunny day, maybe. Yeah, I would, I would say anything in the more like emo leaning realm, whether it's like 90 stuff like sunny day or like, I mean, I, honestly, like I think all of us to varying degrees loved like, Armor for Sleep oh, or yeah. like Senses Fail, Big like time, early 2000s yeah. emo, like Motion City soundtrack Reggie or stuff like that. Yeah, Reggie yeah, and I mean, the Full yeah. Shit that we were listening to when we were like, I don't know, like 11 to sure. 15 years mm-hmm. old. It's not like 
cool to listen to right now, maybe <laughs> right. necessarily, but um, yeah, yeah, stuff like that. And uh, I want to move on to the album that you guys released, Moments of Clarity, in 2023. Phenomenal album all throughout. I feel like there's a lot of variety in it, and there's a bunch of consistency, which I just a lot of bands can't really do that sometimes. And I know I'm not in a position to be like, I know what's good music or whatever. But when I listen to it, every track on there is just phenomenal. There's some different stuff on there. My favorite being Flesh and Solitude, because it feels like Narrowhead is just becoming this Godzilla like creature when you guys become one. And the chemistry on here is the best out of all of them, in my opinion, all the albums that you guys have out. We agree. Yeah. Yeah. And it shows live in the live aspect. I've seen you guys a bunch of times now and, every time you guys kill it and i'm just wondering as a fan what's the songwriting process like on that album or how was it like um yeah first thank you again um i i always really appreciate hearing people compliment specifically that record just because it was the one that we put the most time and effort into but um i think it was also a culmination of just years of i mean it's so cliche to say this but just like trial and error and playing a bunch of shows and also like the lineup was so in flux for years. Like I kind of think of each of the three LPs as like a different version of the band almost. Mm -hmm. um, like, and there's like a through line obviously, but um, it was like satisfaction was like me and Jacob and Ryan Hughes, the OG guy. Mm -hmm. um, and then 12th house was like me and Jacob and Will and Ryan Chavez. And then moments of clarity was the first one where Cora was in the band and Ruby wasn't really even in the band yet, but like the first round of, like demoing like the first like eight or so songs that we had for that record we recorded with rubio and ruby was like pretty hands-on like helping us chase the sound and figure out like little details in the song so now that the lineup is like it feels pretty like this is the five piece it kind of feels like you know ruby pretty, was like yeah. a, like six man on that record anyway so i think it all just comes down to having five people all pulling in the same direction and like being able to just you know contribute mm -hmm. i think we definitely feel pretty close to final form like right now you know like yeah feels like everyone's locked in pretty good that's great to hear and you guys a couple of days ago announced that you're going to be releasing a cd and a dvd dvd excuse me and there's like bonus tracks music videos and stuff like that and once i heard that pre-ordered that right away i didn't tell you that but i did I and that. uh how did that come about? Was it just like, hey, we have a bunch of ideas. Let's do the CD, DVD thing? Or... I think it's kind of started with Jacob had been trying to get like a, a remix done for Caroline. And this guy, Cold 3 k from Kansas City made one. And it sounded sick. And then I think Run For Cover was kind of like, we should do some kind of deluxe thing to roll that around Coachella and the idea just kind of morphed into what if we got more remixes done like i think they also y'all had plans to get like remixes like that done from the beginning right like yeah it's we've always wanted to have, i mean we even i think initially when uh rfc was like repressing satisfaction we wanted to even have like cool in motion or ashtray remixes done but we're just so like mm -hmm. kind of scatterbrained that it took us a couple years of like actually talking about it for a time to do it to actually work out yeah um but yeah we're so we have yeah like you said it, it started with the cold 3k one that was the first one we got and then when run for cover was like hey let's uh you know they gave us some some momentum to be like hey let's do this rollout for like a deluxe edition we hit up a couple other friends um to just to give us a couple other remixes sorry i spaced out for some <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no worries um that's awesome and I'm, i can't wait till that comes in in the mail or whatever and i'm probably gonna talk about it on social media okay, so yeah. um something i've always wondered and i thought it was very interesting because each member of the band or i don't know if i'm missing somebody or something but everybody has a different side quest i want to say i don't want to say like side project because you guys put your full energy and emotion into all these projects so i don't want to belittle it and say it's something like less than and uh, I was wondering, do you think it's important for other bands to utilize that type of aspect where you got to go make something different? And then do you think it gives a general boost to the ideas once you guys come back to Narrowhead and come back as a full band? Definitely. I mean, I think especially like where we've been the last like, I guess like post COVID kind of just like touring. I don't want to say relentlessly because there's lots of bands that tour mm -hmm. harder, but mm -hmm. touring a lot um, and making a record in between then and starting to write new songs now, like 
I think it's always good to have a couple months to decompress, whether that's just chilling at home and like focusing on a job and like domestic yeah. life or whatever, or just sitting, dem- sitting on your couch and staring at the wall for two weeks. Like, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I think all of us have, uh, other musical and creative outlets at home. And I do think, like you said, I think it gives you a chance to look at things from a different perspective. And then when you come back to Narrowhead, it's like your brain feels a little bit like, uh, refreshed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Rejuvenated too. Huh? Rejuvenated, and, yeah. And, uh, Man, I was wondering because you guys have, I mentioned you guys have a lot of different sounds and stuff. And on 12th House Rock, you had this song that I just adore. It's called Wastrel. And you guys did, it was like acoustic based. And I was just thinking, I was like, would Narrowhead ever do an acoustic session? I guess in Narrowhead Unplugged, I guess. Would that ever come about? Because I feel like you guys would kill That'd be that. Sick. Yeah, I think we would definitely love to do that. But I mean, yeah. I mean, I think I can speak for the band yeah. Nirvana and Alice in Chains Unplugged. You're like, <laughs> like, yeah goaded so <laughs> it'd be cool to do i think that um it would have to be one of, i mean same thing as like us like having this nebulous idea of remixes for years and then run for cover kind of like getting the ball rolling on it like yeah. if an opportunity presented itself for us to do it in a really cool way i think we could do it and it would be cool but um it's probably not in the cards necessarily yeah, anytime yeah. soon but it would be it would be sick yeah and some i don't know if this is random it's kind of random but i just went on narrowhead's youtube channel and a couple of years ago like six years ago you guys released an elliot smith cover of speed trials i was wondering like was that just for fun you know it probably was but would you guys remember any like memories or anything based around that song because i was like oh i didn't know this existed when it's funny because there's there's that song and then there's another like youtube only song mm-hmm. uh What's the one with Ryan and, and, and Jacob on the the super like shoegazy satisfaction uh, or no Where Are You Now? Like those two songs oh, are like you're talking about the Beastie Boys cover. Oh, and is that even on the internet anywhere? I don't know. Anyways, yeah, we um that that song uh yeah, it was like probably like I remember it was probably like eight, nine years ago now. Oh, wow. Me and Jacob just got like I think he showed me either or and we were just like <laughs> went into like a deep like Elliot Smith phase that we're still into this day. I love Elliot Smith. But yeah, that was a thing where like uh, this guy chased a master that we're friends with from Houston. He started to kind of like, he was going to like distribute our music and he helped us record the single version of Bulma that came out like mm-hmm. a year or two before 12th house rock. Um, and in somewhere in those months of just hanging with chase, um, Jacob went over and just recorded it at chase's house. So uh, Jacob is the only one that has any, I wasn't even there when that was tracked. Mm. So um but it's it's, 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 (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah, i was wondering because i knew i knew a bunch of different members came in or whatever during that it's been so long since that happened and i was just curious and um i have another gift for you guys and i talked about deftones so you know i had to pull out yet another deftones little 2000 2001 magazine and yeah, man, there's a lot of detailizations on there. Park and yeah. murder drama. Whoa. Yeah, it's <laughs> old school crying cover. That's wow. cool. Yeah. Fear Factory. Yeah, just another gift, just in case you guys uh, hate this interview. And, uh, no, dude, this thanks, is sick, this dude. Is thank you so awesome. much. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> um, last question, I guess. Uh, if I, well, this is like a what's it called a. I forgot what it's called, but say I'm not a uh, Narrowhead fan. I've never heard of Narrowhead. Please put like put what song would you give me to listen to to make me a fan of this band? Never heard Narrowhead. What does that mean? I have no idea what's going on. What comes to mind? And you're like, this is the one. You need to listen to this. Uh, you know, it's funny because I think the songs that seem to be the most popular. So maybe technically, what I should say is like cool in motion or make it hurt and i would maybe say cool in motion i still really love that song Mm -hmm. but my favorites are like newer ones like i would say the real or fine day or sunday or caroline maybe but it'd be your flesh and solitude yeah Yeah, yours it it definitely it'd be your song for me it's one of my favorite airhead songs dope yeah (laughs) man i don't want to make this too long because you guys busy people so uh I'm pretty much going to wrap up the interview because that was an awesome time. Thank you guys for your time. Yeah, and dude, thanks for, glad thanks to for give, us. give you guys some stuff. Glad we could test out these mics. And uh, shout out Narrowhead. Like and subscribe. Keep the music alive. Narrowhead will never die. Shout out Dumb Toes. <laughs>
Hell yeah. Hey, can you, did you end it? <laughs> okay. Cool. Thanks, man.